<laughs> Liquid sunshine, I like that. We're so glad to have you here. My name is Linda. I'm going to be your tour guide tonight. I'm also the president of the Old City Cemetery Committee. Now, the Old City Cemetery Committee is the nonprofit organization that supports the Sacramento Historic City Cemetery. We have volunteers who do gardening and research, and we repair the headstones, genealogy. We do tours. Probably some of you have been on our Saturday morning tours during the uh, drier seasons. Um, the research that we do is the basis for all of the stories you're going to hear tonight. We're going to introduce you to some of our residents. I feel like I really have my hands full here. Um, the stories are all true. And uh, they are mostly murders you're going to hear about tonight because we like to talk about that stuff during the Halloween season. And I want to let you know that we really appreciate you buying your Lantern Tour tickets. The money all goes to support our programs. This cemetery has been here since 1849. It was established with a 10-acre grant from Captain John Sutter. We're now at about 28 acres. We also want to tell you about uh, the wildlife we have in the cemetery. You might see some owls tonight as it starts to get darker. I think the falcons have all gone to bed. You'll probably see some feral kitty cats. When you see the really pretty black ones with the white stripe down their back, <laughs> don't approach those. They're, you just don't, don't want to do that. Um, they don't like big crowds of people, though, so it's a real good idea for us all to stay together in a group. Very peaceful. 
He woke up exceptionally early in the morning and he ran about the house and he nailed shut all of the windows and all of the doors except one. All of the windows? He nailed them all shut. Oh, then he came back into the room and he crept up on her and he jumped on her and began to strangle her. Here. You can imagine, strangle her. And she fought him off and they fell to the floor. Oh. At that time, he pulled a pistol out from I know not where. A sane man would not have a pistol. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. She didn't tell me. He took a pistol and he took aim at her. She moved and he hit her in the arm and she lay there bleeding. But he didn't and she, he continued to hit her. But she fought and fought. And the children came to the door to help their mother. And poor Mary yelled at her. Children, run for your lives, run for your lives. And they did. They escaped. I go back to where? He came back to her fought her. She fought again. And she had just began to escape and he took aim and shot her in the lung. Oh, and she fearfully wounded as she was, made her way through the only open door out to the neighbors. And the neighbors saw her struggling. Well, that neighbor took her to another neighbor's house and they laid her down to bed peacefully where she related the story to the neighbors who related to the husband, who related to the sheriff, who related to me. That's why I know everything. That's me. Yeah. Well, the, the, the neighbors came out. They found that no one had a gun, but they knew Mr. Ross did. I mean, it's 1898. It's civilized. Oh, it's not the old west. No, of course not. And of course, we are very civilized. A bit more tonic here. Oh, just a bit. Just a bit. Oh, there's so much. Well, what happened after that? As they went out looking for that awful Thomas Harrison, searching up the house. Well, they went into a house. They went to the bedroom where the fight had ensued. There was a great puddle of blood on the floor and a straight razor laying next to the puddle. It seems as though that dastardly Thomas had slit his own throat and thrown the razor down. Then he went about the house looking for the children and looking for his wife. But they were gone. He didn't know that. He went into the children's room to their bed, and not finding the children, he set their bed on fire. Oh, <laughs> that was for a oh, <laughs> He did, he set their bed. And then he ran about, outside looking for them everywhere, pistol still in hand. When the neighbors came looking for him, not finding him there, they followed the trail of blood out into the yard. They went to the barn and up into the hay mow. They could tell he'd been there looking for it because there was a trail of blood down the sides of the ladder. Oh, that's disgusting. But he thought there. she was in the halo? He thought she was like, yes, she was. She. How did he think she was going to climb up into the halo? Oh, I'm sure one of her boyfriends. <laughs> oh, perhaps. They, like it. they didn't find it. They followed the trail of blood further into the yard, out to the back to the outhouse. They flung open the door, and here is the dastardly Mr. Thomas with his windpipe slid open. And a good thing, too. A darn good thing. The outhouse was definitely the place for that piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> 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 now, now, what do you know from that? I understand. I, I think it's just absolutely the most horrific tale. And I can understand why she's in the dire straits that she's in, in the hospital, and she doesn't, they, they don't. They don't give her much hope at this point, which is really horrible. I feel so sorry for the children. They must have been absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. And they, they capture him. Are they going to try him? Oh, yes. And let me tell you, if they allowed women to vote and to be on the jury, I'd hang that. So I sorry. Would, I, I, would, I would agree with you. Yes, I think. Yes. Hang him that very day. Are no words too strong? Insane is the light version of what I would call that now. But I am a lady. I am always a lady. Excuse me. That was a really horrible story. I am so sorry what happened. That's a terrible thing. But you know, it's getting on to the afternoon now. I need to pick up the children from school. Um, per and perhaps you would come with me and I'll go get them. And um, maybe we could stop at Mr. Joe's soda gun. You know, they have that new product, Coca-Cola, which oh. I understand is wonderful. Oh, I do. I would love to try that. I understand the cocaine is good at settling your nerves and oh, settling the stomach. That's exactly what <laughs> Oh, I think we shall. Yes. Um, yes. I get my wrap, and we'll be on our way. Oh, darling, I think that's a wonderful idea. Oh, oh, that's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> Make room for the Coca-Cola. <laughs> Thank you.
something like a refreshing coke. Saturday afternoon, I was making coffee, normal day, coffee. <coughs> SB walks in, and the language, Stefan Bauman, my former husband. Oh, okay, that's where the, the term came from. Uh, he, um, him and I were married for 13 years. He was only a husband for about 12 months of that. And, uh, Time off for good behavior? Oh, no, no, not him. <laughs> he uh, walked into our house. Our two children were gone, thank you. And uh, picks up a pistol and shoots me. And I'm gone like that. I happen to hear that. I recall my ghostly memory comes and goes, but I remember being in my backyard and I was looking over my other, no, I was not looking over my other neighbor's fence. I was gardening. That's it. I was gardening. And I heard a shot. And he came outside, and I looked at him, and he looked all well. I figured, oh, he's just cleaning the pistol that went off. He went back inside. And about five minutes later, nothing interesting was happen happening in my garden. Nothing interesting was happening in my garden. I heard another shot, and I saw him come out in the backyard, and this time he was covered in blood. No. He had shot himself through the left temple. He didn't aim low enough. For the brain? Yeah, I agree. But <laughs> he missed his brain entirely, went through his jaw, and ended up with the ball of his pistol lodged in his jaw before his autopsy, because he did pass away from all this. But before the autopsy, he managed to spit the ball out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, oh, death. old news. <laughs> death. <laughs> Anyhow, so he tried to blame you before he actually crossed over. He told everybody that you shot him first. Then he went into the backyard, came back inside, and then he shot you after you had shot him. But see, when Lying you drugs. the first time, never no get right. involved with them. Lying drugs. Yeah, that's true. What are you? Are you nice? You're fabulous, darling. Fabulous. So anyhow, that guy, he was no good. And my beautiful friend here, she's looking for a long-term relationship. As am I. We are looking for someone to spend eternity with. If you've been considering a new lady, I assure you, our drama is all in the past, 113 years behind us. And we're looking for new takers. Anybody want to spend eternity with us? Right this way, anyone else? Have a lovely evening. I think the future lies behind you somewhere else. Gentlemen, this way. Oh, hello. 